Security remains a crucial issue for telcos and their customers, and it is an area that Red Hat takes extremely seriously. Joining me now from Canada to discuss this issue is Vincent Danen, Director of Product Security at Red Hat. Vincent, very nice to talk to you. Very nice to meet you as well, Guy. Oh, what makes Red Hat Enterprise Linux so secure? Well, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, uh, it builds on the strong foundation of security uh, features that are present in earlier versions of uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So in version 8, we added support for crypto policies, and that gives you greater control over what um, crypto you allow in your system and ways to enforce it. Also in version 8, we included the Insights client by default, which gives you some really awesome visibility into your system, some of which includes security alerting and oversight. And obviously, we include technology like SE Linux, which protects your system and the containers that run on it uh, using mandatory access controls. And while SE Linux will not stop all vulnerabilities from being exploited, uh, we've seen it reduce the impact of some vulnerabilities and completely prevent others from being impactful at all. And so we look at security like an onion. And there are multiple layers required to achieve good security because there is no silver bullet. And Red Hat Enterprise Linux provides multiple layers to achieve great security. SC Linux is one of those layers. Uh, the new system-wide crypto policy support is another. Uh, RHEL has foundational security layers built in, including uh, tool chain hardening features that benefit the entire stack. I could go on, the list is long. There's a ton of security-related technologies in Red Hat Enterprise Linux that make it so secure. So that's the technology side of this. What about the people? Who in Red Hat addresses security vulnerabilities as they come up? So we have a global team uh, called Product Security whose full-time focus is to understand and analyze vulnerabilities and figure out how they impact our products. And their job isn't only to fix problems, but it's also to understand them well enough so that they can explain to customers how the problems might impact their environment. And so it's more than just patches. We provide some great resources to our customers so that they can understand these security flaws and their potential impact. And uh, the resources include our CVE pages in the customer portal, uh, CVE means Common Vulnerability Enumeration, which is an industry standard way of naming security flaws. And on those pages, you can get all kinds of information on every CVE that affects Red Hat's products. We produce vulnerability articles as well for high profile issues uh, for things like Spectre Meltdown, Heartbleed, and other of, of those named and branded vulnerabilities. We produce data that can be consumed through automation uh, using industry standard XML files, as well as our security data API. And that lets you query for security information on these flaws. And so we're very transparent about what affects our products. And we give customers a number of ways to get at that information. But it's not just customers. All of these resources are available to anyone, which is awesome because we see that these resources are used by others in the industry, uh, be it partners or third party vendors. Now, Red Hat gives everything back to the community. So what's the advantage to using Red Hat Enterprise Linux versus a free version of Linux? Uh, so yes, we give everything back to the community, both upstream and downstream. Now, downstream communities that are based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux can't implement the fixes until after we do, so there's going to be a time delay. The more mission critical your environment, the bigger the risk that you assume waiting for someone else to implement that fix. Also, we don't only just build the packages, we rigorously test them before we release them. And so those communities don't take our packages. What they do is they take the raw patches and they may or may not have the resources to do the same level of quality assurance before releasing. Now, upstream is a little bit different. And if you're using upstream sources, it typically means that you're compiling it yourself. And so you have to do your own testing. And you're fully responsible for keeping up with those upstream sources. Now, an enterprise vendor like Red Hat, we take care of that for you uh, because we do the building and the testing and the releasing, which is awesome and great for reliability and stability. So is there some risk attached to this high-speed innovation? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, being this involved with Upstream lets us innovate faster. And the challenge is that with so many components and so much code available, there's a large number of packages, mm -hmm. any one of which could have a security issue. Now, any software package could face this. We're not unique in that way. And that's why so many customers trust Red Hat. We take the enterprise approach of backporting fixes from Upstream uh, to the software that we ship. And this allows us to provide a patch that only fixes the security issue. So we don't add any new code and we don't add any new features. And this reduces the likelihood that you're going to have a security issue from that new code. Now, when you rely solely on upstream, this is a risk that you are going to have to take. 
not only will you get new security fixes from the latest upstream version, but you could get new security flaws that you're going to have to fix later on as well. And we've seen many times where a security issue did not affect us because we did not ship later versions of that package. Now, not only that, but our backporting process is great for both ops and dev because things don't change on you without warning. Using an upstream source provides you no guarantees. Uh, something might change in an API or an ABI, and then you need to fix and test your code that use those sources. And with our backporting, you don't have to worry about any of that. Only the security issues are fixed, and nothing else changes that would impact the deployment of your own code. Now, there's this, this notion that many eyes make all bugs shallow. Now, doesn't the huge number of people looking at this code reduce the risk of vulnerabilities? Uh, potentially, because everyone who's using open source can look at the code and uh, find flaws. Uh, the fact is, few people do, and few people are actually qualified to identify a problem and then initiate a fix. And even if an end user could, I'm not sure it's the best use of their time. Probably not. And if you pull something down from the upstream and it's acting funny, you're at the mercy of volunteers in upstream who may or may not be willing or able to help. Uh, how can you go into production with that level of uncertainty? Now, with a commercial vendor like Red Hat, we actually pay people to find and fix those problems so that you only have to worry about applying those patches. Now, my team pays attention to over 400,000 open source packages so that the customers don't have to. And last year alone, we fixed over 1,300 security vulnerabilities across all of those packages in our products. Wow, that's a lot. What has been added or improved in Red Hat Enterprise Linux Eight to make it inherently more secure? So as I mentioned before, the biggest thing is that we include insights out of the box. It's not activated by default because you need to choose to do that. And we would never enable something like that without your express permission. But if you don't enable it, you don't get access to all the great features and the insights that it can actually bring to your fleet. And the ability to get at a glance reporting so that you can make sure that you didn't neglect to patch a handful of systems out of hundreds or thousands is actually pretty awesome. There's a huge level of comfort being able to see your risk posture across your entire fleet using insights. How do those security benefits translate to security further up the stack? So whatever you layer on top of your operating system is only going to be as secure as your operating system itself. Uh, the smallest problem that you may think is unrelated to those top layers can be impacted by that foundation. So when we look at the security of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, it's the foundation of the security of the rest of your stack. And because of this, we take a holistic approach to our portfolio, and we consider a vulnerability not just in one product, but also how it could impact other products. So for example, someone could potentially exploit a vulnerability in the Linux kernel, which might give them backdoor access, say, to OpenStack. And so again, knowing that the operating system is the basis of your stack security, and knowing that there's a team of people whose full-time job it is to make sure that it stays safe, should be a great source of comfort and confidence. Now, you're bundling Red Hat Insights in with RHEL. I'd imagine that this sort of proactive management this allows would, would, would have an impact on the environment security. Absolutely. Uh, we've actually built rules to look across all the systems that have Insights enabled and identify any that have vulnerabilities that are likely to impact an environment's overall security posture. Now, there are a number of very publicized vulnerabilities that go through what we call the customer security awareness process. And that's where we pay an extra level of attention to those vulnerabilities that are most likely to threaten production environments. And these rules are actually really intelligent because some of the vulnerabilities only assert themselves if you have a particular configuration. Now using insights, we can actually see if your system has a vulnerable configuration or not. And then we can let you know if you urgently need to apply that patch. Or, we can tell you that the condition is present because you have the vulnerable package, but your configuration doesn't actually make you vulnerable. And so you can apply that patch during your regular patch cycles. As we've been saying, security is, is a critically important issue. Final question to you, Vincent, is you know, what keeps you up at night? There are a lot of things that keep me up at night. Uh, but when I think about our mission of protecting customers, uh, the number one thing that I worry about is customers not actually applying patches to their systems. So when you don't patch, you leave yourself vulnerable. And I've been doing this for a really long time, and the speed with which people can turn a vulnerability uh, into a working exploit is shrinking rapidly. Applying patches is absolutely your number one defense. 
And aside from that, companies have a lot more assets now, right? It's not just racks of systems in a data center. It's racks of systems with multiple virtual machines and tons of containers. Now, any one of those could have an unpatched flaw. Now, we don't patch everything because not everything poses real risk. But when we do create a patch, it's because we've determined that it does actually pose a risk to you. Now, having insight into where a patch is applicable and not applied in your fleet is important. How can you feel secure if you don't know where you're exposed? And that's actually one of the reasons why I really love insights, because it can tell you what your exposure actually is. Now, all of that is to say, the thing that keeps me up at night, you really need to patch your systems. It's really, really important. Great advice. Vincent, thank you very much for joining us today. You're very welcome. Thank you.